What are these cryptic messages? Is it legal to plant bugs on military members? Am I allowed to be in this secret lab? What the heck is that? Hey party people, I'm back here again to talk about The Sims 4 some more. This time I want to talk about a particular pack. A mysterious one. Y'all already know what it is. It's Strangerville. I think Strangerville is a good pack. I said what I said. When Strangerville was first released, there was definitely some backlash to it, but it's fair to say that happens every time a new Sims 4 pack is released. This time around players were saying it felt empty, which again, isn't much different from literally every pack. The story fails to impress, it's tedious and restrictive. The main reason why it feels empty would be due to the lack of significant gameplay features and towny involvement. Although one could argue the whole storyline is the major significant gameplay feature, which is true, the pack still doesn't come with features that feel, uh, lively, I guess? or incredibly involved, which is kind of like the whole Sims 4. Everything kind of feels like that, but in this pack, you sort of just go here, search through this pile, talk to the townies, get the same response from pretty much every townie, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, if you wanted a Sims 2 Strange Town storyline where there's serial killers, alien abductions, Grim Reaper love storylines, and a lookalike Bella Goth clone, then this isn't where you're going to get that. Because the only way you're going to get something like that is if you go back and play Sims 2. Those pre-made families and neighborhood stories were just made differently back then, you know? Well, the storyline fails to impress me. You might be thinking. I guess for that, I just gotta say, to each their own. And that's okay. You might not like the storyline, or this pack overall, but someone else out there might absolutely adore it. And that is A-OK. -okay. Another thing I want to point out is that this game pack is one out of like two or three packs that actually includes a story for you to play through. It was the first of its kind for The Sims 4. The other two packs are Journey to Bat 2 and Cleaning Up the Neighborhoods in Eco Lifestyle. So I do have to give Strangerville credit where credit is due. It was the first of its kind, and it led the way for additional potential packs with storylines included in them. I do agree that the activities and tasks you gotta do are tedious. Nonetheless, I think that's because of the loading screens. It wouldn't feel nearly as long or frustrating if loading screens between neighborhoods or different houses in the same neighborhood didn't exist. The activities are pretty restricted as well. It's a very much go here, do this sort of thing, not much to it. Obviously, I don't disagree with those criticisms. Despite all of that, I still believe Strangerville is a decent pack. Or, as the title of this video suggests, a worthy pack. I gotta say, straight off the hop, that I don't care for the western aesthetic normally. Regardless, I adore the aesthetic in this pack. It fits in well with other packs like Jungle Adventure, Outdoor Retreat, Seasons, and oddly enough, Tiny Living. The clothing is a nice change from what we usually get since it's not perfectly polished and proper looking. It's dirty and grungy and perfect for the story. I love them, particularly this jacket and this one here. The four adult hairstyles are nice. The only masculine hairstyle reminds me so much of this family from Strangetown. It's ridiculous. I love it. One thing I want to say is that I am disappointed by the cowboy boots and hat options. I kind of expected more. As well as the fact that they didn't give us chaps, denim skirts, overalls, bolo ties, or bandanas. Build By has some awesome stuff especially if you're accessing all of the debug items. Firstly, I gotta proclaim my obsession with all of these windows. The pillars, doors, fences, and spandrels. I think I use these windows and doors on a ton of builds, not only in Strangerville, I just adore them. I like that this pack is heavily influenced by the military and included numerous items that could be used for a military themed build. Clearly the build buy items represent Strangetown pretty perfectly. You can build so much with this pack. A bunker. A plane crash site. A train crash site. A lab. A secret lab. A zombie apocalypse hideout. A spaghetti western set. A Victorian house. A haunted house. A ranch. A military base. A country bar. A retro bar. A military boot camp. 
a museum. I could continue listing them for a few more minutes. However, I'll stop now. I think you get my point. The possibilities are endless. Side question. What have you built using the Strangerville build buy items? Similar to the cast items, the build buy items mix and match with a few different packs, including cottage living, island living, outdoor retreat, seasons, and get famous. In addition, the world is beautiful. It's absolutely perfect looking. It's got those red mountains, a country downtown with a fake military base in the background, the secret lab is eerie, the bar and library looks straight out of a movie, and this little trailer park is adorable. I enjoy this conspiracy shack right here. The town is incredibly wonderful that it actually makes me sad that there aren't more lots to check out. Although I don't see that as a Strangerville issue. That's a Sims 4 issue. Despite the fact that these are EA builds, I do actually enjoy how the exteriors of the houses in this neighborhood look. Just don't go inside them expecting greatness. Because, well, you know why. This is sort of where people tend to start dozing off. It's okay if you do. And it's okay if you disagree with what I'm about to say. Regardless of that, this town isn't boring, nor is the gameplay if you're actively following along with it. You need to go all out for this game pack and storyline. Pick that Strangerville aspiration and allow the game to guide you through the mystery. Trying to balance too much while trying to complete the story will be your gameplay downfall. I've played through it a few times now and I definitely had more fun when I focused on the story and the tasks at hand. Two words. Possessed. Sims. These peeps are hilarious to watch, and also incredibly creepy. The FBI following you around is awesome. I love it when they come into your house and like take your cheap fridge as evidence. The military folk hanging around the town definitely gives this place an Area 51 vibes. I don't know. I'm just a huge fan of the whole atmosphere, to be honest. And lastly, we gotta circle back to the storyline aspect of this. Many players have stated that they played the storyline once and won't ever do it again, or they believe that they'll get bored doing it again. I'm here to tell you that you might be wrong. If you liked it enough the first time around, you should give it another go. There are other things you can do after completing it the first time. You could actually befriend Mother, which would be interesting to work into a storyline or a challenge. What if the Sim who finished the mystery had to come back and do it again? This time around, maybe they have a family and their family members become possessed? You might even want to come back with your first Sim's child or grandchild so they can go through the mystery. Your story might be that things started becoming strange again and they wanted to follow in their parents' or grandparents' footsteps. Aside from repeating the main storyline, you could work in the careers into your gameplay. Becoming a scientist, a politician, a secret agent, or joining the military could offer you a neat storyline idea. Being able to put bugs on others seems a tad cooler when you're sims in any of those careers. Maybe you want the world to be wacky so you could build a bunker with a purpose. If that's the case, then you could progress it just enough into the storyline that you've opened the secret lab's doors and now the plants are growing. This will cause it so townspeople get possessed. There's your reason for building a bunker. Ooh, pair this with a rags to riches challenge? I think you'd have something very special right there. Essentially, the gameplay gives this pack a purpose, and it also provides a fantastic foundation for other storytelling opportunities. Strangerville is nowhere close to perfect. There are tons of areas that could have been improved upon, but I do have to admit that I like this pack quite a bit. I enjoy the nostalgic aspect to it. It made me think about all of those times I played Strange Town back in the day, which was definitely one of my favorite worlds in Sims 2. I can't complain about the mysterious nature of this pack. The whole thing plays into the strange military desert town situation, and I'm here for it. Not only that, but I enjoy the cast and build by items from the pack. So I like it. It's pretty good. That's my opinion. What's yours? Do you love it or hate it? Or do you just like it a wee bit? Thank you for watching. You're awesome. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe for future Sims and Paralyzed Relay content. Thank you again. Bye!